Want to find out how overpowered Hussite Bohemia is? Stick around. Before we begin, I want to thank Paradox for sponsoring this video, and I want to let you guys know that there is a huge strategy weekend sale on a bunch of Paradox's games that includes you 4 so if there's any DLC that you've been missing out on or any game that you want to buy from Paradox, now is the time you can get up to 50% on all the DU4 discounted content by using the link in the description and the pinned comment. Comments, so I highly advise you guys to take advantage of this opportunity. Before the start of our game in 1444, a major event in Europe, the Hussite Wars, really shaped the way that our world exists today. E4 tries to portray this in the best way possible through a really great set of events that you have from the beginning that lets you go Hussite, as well as an amazing mission tree that goes along with it. We'll be following these events and we'll be showing how overpowered the Hussite religion is and why if we get 5k likes on the video we'll do a part two for this when the rings of power were forged bohemia was one of the seven to receive such a ring as such you have the ability to vote on who should be the next emperor of the holiest broman empire we gave out the plus one mana for all three estates enforcing unity of fate so we can convert our provinces faster as well as expansion of zealotry we also gave the supremacy over the crown and the strong duchies for the two extra diplo relation slots and liberty desire reduction for our starting vassals as well as of course patronage of the arts and free enterprises we also will be developing the gold mining keb but before we do that we will be selling titles for 380 ducats and before we seize land we need to wait for one month to pass we got the compact of basil make sure you honored the compacts and now we can develop the gold mine once and make sure you bring this up to 10 base production as that's going to give you a massive amount of income from this gold mine. Afterwards, we can seize land. We're also going to get our rivals and we will be going for the Hungarians. And the Poles are a great target, but we will ally them for the time being and use them in our war against the Hungarians, which will come very, very soon. And remember that you start with 10% professionalism. So if you recruit any mercenary companies, you will lose 5 professionalism for each mercenary company that you recruit. Waited for a few more days and as such we can now choose Austria as our rival and even the great nation of Brundenberg. Return of the Hussites. We can either become a Hussite nation or we can choose just our leader to be Hussite but we stay Catholic or just get some rebels and remain Catholic. Of course, go for Jan Hus knew the truth. Jiri is a podrebad and I know I butchered that name is now our king. That means we can get royal marriages with everybody around. I also recommend, in case you didn't realize, not to get any royal marriages until you get this event because there is a small chance you might actually get a ruler and we really want Ziri to be the one for us. Now that we've done this, we can do the Hussite Regency that is going to give us missionary cost reduction. In order to get the Hussite Center of Reformation, we need to convert all of Bohemia to Hussite now. We can assign the Enforce religious unity, which is going to make it even faster to convert the province. Whilst we wait for our truce to expire with Hungary, we will be attacking the nation of Brandenburg and we're going for the humiliation CB so that we get a little bit of extra power points. The walls of Berlin have fallen and the armies are going to fall soon as well. There you go. Stacken Vipinus Maximus. Now it's time for Carpet Segeus. Do the show of strength to get the extra mana points. And now all we need to do is wait for the Hungarian truce to finish. The Trusenstein is over and we can attack the Hungarians. The best part is that they're allied to the Austrians, so we can do one of our most important missions, humiliate Austria in this war. Call in all of your allies that you can call in. If you allied the Poles, there is a very high chance that they would love to join into this. Don't call them in. You can just call them after a few months into the war. There is a chance that they would love to join or will they even declare their own separate war. We're going to be rushing for Trenchen and then afterwards we're going to be rushing for the capital of Pest because we arrived on the province of Trenchen before the end of the month and they didn't get a tick to enforce a garrison here. Once our siege tick finishes this fort will actually belong to us. You can also assign objectives to your allies if you want to. For example I'm going to ask the Saxons here to siege down the north of Austria and I'm going to ask the Palatinate to siege down the western parts of uh, Austria. Siege 
siege took over and we took the fort. Now we have a mountain fort and we're going to start splitting our army and doing a little bit of carpet sieging around here. Make sure you don't get yourself stack wiped by the enemy army as they do have quite a few troops. Because we got a lot of admin points, we also can get admin tech for first before anyone else, which means we got some extra innovativeness to help us out. I'm also rushing for the fort of Temes, which was only garrisoned at the start of the war, so it's not at 2,000 maximum garrison. I also recommend not to get baited in highlands or fort provinces, as that would be the end of your armies. Also, look at this. The Poles are willing to join us now, since we have 10 favors that I've been currying with them. With the Poles in the war, it should be a lot faster that we finish this. Oop, did I not just say not to fight and not get baited in highlands? Well, I guess I didn't listen to my own advice, boys, but not to fear. The winged hussars are here. Hey, hey, we won that battle. Nice. We got to make sure that we take the entirety of the Slovak state before we let the Poles join in. Otherwise, they might be interested in taking these lands for themselves. We're pretty bad when it comes to our manpower, so we have to slack in recruitment a little bit. We're going to go with this twice so that after this, we actually can start recruiting mercenary companies when we need to get more soldiers for the war. As your first aspect, I recommend you go for Sola Scriptura so you get the war score versus other religions minus 10% because you are the only Hussite in the world. So that's basically a bonus against everybody. Also, what on earth, Austria? Freaking death stacks in 1450? What are you talking about here? And Hungary follows suit, of course. I'm gonna siege down Vienna. Thank you very much. Oh god, they're stuck in Vipening the Poles. Yep, bye bye Poland. Vienna has fallen and we also can peace out the Teutons here. As for the Austrians, I would be happy with humiliation, which they're giving me already. Wow, okay. So I can do my mission here that gives me a subjugation on Brandenburg. I'm going to keep this though. I'm not going to enact it just yet. What I am going to do is I'm going to ask for the Defender of the Faith title so I can uh, use a second missionary. And after I've converted this one province, I'm going to peace out the Hungarians. If I do it before, then I cannot do the Hussite resurgence mission since I have to convert the newly added lands also. So remember that in your playthrough. Hey Hungary, Poland sends its regards and is quite upset about you killing their armies earlier. Hey, the last conversion is done. Now the entirety of Bohemia is Hussite, which means we can do the other mission, Hussite resurgence that has just given us a center of reformation which will start reforming everybody to Hussite. This is going to be so annoying for everyone it's insane because of the center of reformation we're basically gonna kill the hre a hundred years earlier that means we can peace out the hungarians now we'll take just slovakia so we don't actually get any coalition we've started annexing both of our starting vassals and the problem is one of them's gonna finish in 61 and the other one's gonna finish in 59 so what i recommend you do in this situation the one that finishes later just concentrate development in his country this is gonna bring him down to 59 also so November 59 and March 59. And I recommend that you delete the fort in Olomouc since it really isn't a great fort as this is a grassland. Later on, we're going to build the fort after we integrate Glogo in Lignica. We've integrated Glogo, but we're not going to click this button as this is going to give us minus three Diplo reputation. We don't want the minus three stab until we've integrated the second vassal. Also, Slovakia is a full integral part of Czechoslovakia and the gold mine in Novi Zmagidi. Nailed it. It's gonna be upgraded. 10 base production here is what we need. So we get 6.66 exactly ducats from this one other gold mine. Essentially, two gold mines to rule them all. Whenever you integrate your vassals or your personal union members, they get 60% autonomy. You don't integrate them with 0%. So you always have to lower the autonomy. Otherwise, you're not getting the full benefit of having these provinces a part of your country. Start converting them as well. We can set this edict for religious unity. Idea wise, I went for quantity ideas first. Since the extra manpower is going to benefit us greatly in the early game, game and because we went Hussite so we cannot become emperor of the HRE just yet manpower is all we need to fight our wars hey we got the jesting tournament noise we can do another mission with the integration of uh, Silesia namely integrate Silesia getting claim 
Roman Slovakia, which we already have. And with the conquest of Slovakia, we get a restoration of union on Hungary. But we'll get that closer to when our truce expires in 10 years. We're also working on getting our heir on the throne of the Polish kingdom so that we can get the union over Poland also. I just want you guys to see how insane building workshops in Bohemia is. I'm getting 0.37 ducats from building one in Prague, another 0.31 from building one in Drudohori. We also will be attacking the nation of uh, Thuringia here who apparently is drilling. <laughs> they can try to run but you cannot hide from my might my bros. We really managed to catch them off guard that's for sure. Airford has fallen and the rest of the Thuringian army is gonna be dead in a few moments now. We also are marching towards Frankfurt to sell some of our own goods here. Let's get a new general too and this is gonna be an easy battle too. Noise. Let them siege whilst the rest of the army kills off Frankfurt's army. Booyah boys booyah and Frankfurt has fallen now we can peace him out. I'm gonna make them my religion and get a little bit of cash from them nothing major. Darya go now we can finally do our main treaty with the Thuringians. I am planning to take a few provinces. I will also force my religion on them and take as much money as I can take. This is mainly because I want to get more nations. Hussite, Concentratio Complicatio and core up everything afterwards. Also we can do the Bohemian Crystal mission plus 25% price of glass as well until the end of the game. 15 prestige and so on. This is absolutely amazing. Brandenburg is at war with a couple of nations here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give one of those nations some condottieri. I'm gonna even give them for a little bit less than what I want. The point is that we want to support the enemies of Brandenburg so that Brandenburg actually loses the war and these nations take lands from Brandenburg. Why is that? Well quite frankly because we want to subjugate Brandenburg and right now if we go for a subjugation war they would be too big and the aggressive expansion would kill us. So the smaller Brandenburg is, the easier it's gonna be for us to vassalize them. Saxony took a big chunk of Brandenburg, but I got bigger fish to fry here because Croatia is about to go into an independence war and I don't want that to happen since I will be attacking Hungary right now. My truce is over with them. We got the PUCB on them. I can definitely handle them both, but I will call in Poland just so it's a little bit easier for myself. I somehow feel this is not how historically this has to be going right was it the polish siege of vienna highly doubt it union with the hungarians is not going to cost us too much just 18 ae this is literally almost nothing burgundian conquest of freiburg it seems like the burgundians are taking advantage of the fact that the austrians are at war with us so they can pursue their own agenda in the area i like it i like this burgundy you know what i'm actually going to improve with them maybe i'll even get a pu over them in the inheritance don't worry, Croatian, soon you'll be out of the tutelage of Hungary and you'll get the real freedom that you deserve. Whoa, what? I got a core on Vienna? Hold up sec, hold up sec. That means Vienna is Hussite. Oh my god, this is insane. So the center of reformation has been converting lands around me, including the city of Vienna. Bruh. All right, I think we should be able to peace out the Austrians. Yep, we are able to. I am still going to pillage their capital even though it is beloved Hussite lands and I'm gonna cancel their alliance with the English so I'll get a little bit less money enough so that I can still pillage the capital there you go I'm gonna get the PU with them which is only 18 aggressive expansion I want to cancel the cores that they have on me so that they don't have any bad relation modifier with me because I own their cores and stuff that means we can also take a little bit more money and there you go boys now we have a brand new person Union of Hungary with the adjacent Croatians that were in their union have now been transferred to us, thus achieving independence. All right, we can bring our boys back into Prague so we can chill for a little while and we're going to be improving relations with both of these nations here since you want to... Whoa, we got the Diet of Hungary and Croatia, which means that Hungary inherits the Croatian lands, thus getting even bigger, but also means that I don't need to waste two of my Diplo slots. Also can do this mission now that gives us claims on the Austria proper area which is this area here that we already have a core on Vienna and we also can do the mission to get the 
vassalization over Brandenburg. Noise. Now we can do the vassalization war and Darya Go. Let's go for these lands and we can use the second army to attack the Thuringians. Third reform is here and we got the centralized bureaucracy for the reduced autonomy and we also will be attacking the enemy army in the city of Prague which they are besieging right now. Should be a fairly easy fight since we do outnumber them by quite a little bit and we also have more morale actually because of our army tradition compared to the uh, Brandenburgian army tradition. Oh hey we got faceting in the province of Rudahori. Nice! With the diamond district we're basically getting a massive amount of money from these gems here. We can also peace out these guys now. There you go. That's enough for me. And now all we need to do is just focus on piecing out the uh, nation of Dittmarschen. So we're gonna have to get military access through uh, Saxe Lauenburg here. We can peace out Dittmarschen and we're gonna add them to our collection of Hussite nations. Bring our boys back and we can finally peace out the nation of Brundenberg which will become our brand new vassalen. And coalition wise really not that many nations would join into this coalition. Take all the money that we can take since we cannot force our religion on them via the treaty itself. And booyah we got our first Germanic vassal I guess you could say. Let's get our new ideas here too. And we're gonna have to improve relations with them a little bit or we can just pay off the debt and wow that's actually a massive deal. The main focus now is going to be to get an heir of ours on the throne of Poland. Sadly, the nation of Saxe Lauenburg got their heir on the throne of Poland. And now, in order to do the next mission, we need to take these two provinces from Saxony, which means we're going to declare war on Saxony and Kobolidrid Magdeburg, since Magdeburg also has some provinces that belong to our beloved Brandenburg. In order to do our next mission here, that gives us claims on the the entirety of the Ottoman lands in the Balkans, we need to have five forts in these highlighted areas. So we already have four, we're gonna build another one in the province of Huniad, and after this is finished we can do that mission. We also will be attacking the Serbs to get back our cores, and we're gonna do that right now. We can divert some of our troops from here for example, and go into the south. To deal with the Serbians. Oh, where are you going there, Bosnia? You want to get to Stacken Vipenland? Is that where you want to go to? You just arrived. Whoop, Magdeburg's down. That means we can attack him here. Uh, let's go, boys. A uh, lot to go. We should win this, to be fair, because we got more troops. And we can stack wipe them over there. Let's leave a few troops here to siege down uh, Altmark. This was ein Stacken Vipen. Cool. Now we can uh, give these back to our Brandenburgian uh, Vassolen. All four provinces. We're not taking anything except our vassals lands force religion too on them why not that you go nothing else now we can take our armies and go into the south here where apparently the serbians managed to pull together 11,000 troopers good luck sieging that fort though <laughs> with this mission we can get the subjugation on saxony now as well as the faith of brandenburg this gives us three options either we create a union over them which is kind of silly since they already are our vassal and it's easier to integrate great a vassal make them into a march which again not productive or just keep them as a vassal serbia's best friend bosnia here is out of the war and we can just get some money from them war reps pillage the capital why not don't really want much from them especially since i will attack them directly later on let's go now and focus on the serbs we can also destroy their army in those lands that was volt everybody for the husaidl horde okay that was a pop-up just destroyed my whole speech never mind we're gonna pass this over to Hungary and give it to them as well and we also will take some of these lands for ourselves we want to take the Kosovo gold mine especially we do have a little bit of an extra coalition so we can wait for one year before we piece them out this way it's going to be less nations in said coalition we can however do this mission now that gives us permanent claims on Bulgaria Silistria and any province in the Balkans owned by the Ottomans that means all of this Boom, one day we got all of that stuff. Alrighty, oh, we've waited enough for this. It is time to say bye-bye to Serbia. We can also attack the nation of Valachia, which my beloved Hungarians have a claim on. They actually have a claim on the entirety of Valachia and Moldavia. Alright, oh, time to peace out Valachia, our brand new vassal here. And with that, we can get the strong duchies privilege to get an extra two diplo relation slots 
I also could diplomatically vassalize Passau since they are a Hussite nation. And I think I'm actually going to do that. We can get a few rivals as well. I'm going to go for the Muscovites and of course for the Ottomans. Muscovy's actually not the only big Russian in this area. What? Why is Odoyev so big and what happened here? We can influence Passau and that should be close to enough to make them our vassal. Offer mill axis. Boom, they're now our third vassal. Nice. And no Valachia, I'm not making you a march. We are filthy rich. We're getting 22 ducats on the plus whilst we have our full land force limit. Actually, I think it's probably grown a little bit more. Yep, let's get a few more troops. Since we have 41% crown lands, we're gonna sell some titles, get an extra 800 ducats, and still be on the plus with our crown lands. We can use this money to invest in barracks all around the land, meaning that we're gonna have a super high amount of manpower after those finish. A new king has arrived, and with him we have the event, the Heretic King, that gives us the option to convert back to Catholicism completely or everybody that's Catholic gets a heresy CB on us. But we get 10 infantry combat ability and we are gonna stay Hussite because Hussite is the best. I mean look at this with one center of reformation we've converted the whole central part of Europe to Hussite. We're now even a level 3 defender of the faith with level 4 coming very soon after we enforce our religion on a few more countries around and on our our vassals and we got a new heir as well that you go with a horrible spouse what Ludmila what's wrong with you so is Hussite ridiculously strong guys it really is it is a very overpowered in the early game military religion since it gives you shock damage received as well as you get war score versus other religions manpower army tradition DK as well as other great modifiers such as goods produced intolerance of the true faith conversion cost if you want to do a one faith, harsh treatment, religious unity, and so on. So leave a like, 5,000 likes, and we'll do a part two for this video. And don't forget to check the link in the description and the pinned comment. I also want to give a very special thank you to all of my patrons and channel members, as well as my Twitch subscribers. Thank you so much, guys, for all the support. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you.